Shabbat Shalom. So we are in uh, beginning chapter 2 of 1 Peter. And so far, it's a great chapter 1 uh, introduction to his two letters. And it has been describing this great salvation that we have, this born again uh, birth into the kingdom of God. And that's where we left off last week. The two main focuses I've had on uh, chapter 1 is that we should be greatly rejoicing in bad times. Uh, we haven't reached bad times yet. We're still just spoiled here. But eventually that will change and we should be practicing now. If we can't rejoice greatly when it's good, then what are you going to do when it's bad? Right. But we have been uh, focusing on that we should greatly rejoice because everything that matters to us is in the next life, the kingdom, the, that eternal, unperishable, imperishable seed that we've been born into is about the next life, Olam Haba in Hebrew, the world to come. And therefore, you should not be, get all depressed about something happening to you in this life. This life is perishable and it goes away, but the next life will never go away. It is eternal. And so how can you get discouraged in this life when you have your eyes set on that goal of the great inheritance to come plus the blessings of salvation we have today? And this is what Shimon's doing here, uh, teaching to these people because they are being persecuted. And so this is what he's telling them to do. So he's also teaching the last day church, which will once again be persecuted in much of the world today, uh, in the world to come soon, probably here. I was telling some people shopping Bibles in the store yesterday. I go, it is, because I was complaining about how many Bibles there are, and if you're going to stock all of them, you'd need a warehouse, you know. But um, uh, I said, it is such a privilege to be able to offer the Bible to people to sell the Bible. And I go, one of these days, this will be illegal. So today, I have this privilege of selling the Word of God uh, as a Bible, a different, all the different ones that we have, to people. And I have uh, 50 of them stand, sitting in the store right now, and it's legal. That's good. And it is the Word of God, the, the I am it, the truth. Amen? And, and uh, so I, but I told them, now one of these days, this might be illegal to have a Bible, and then you're going to have to come visit me in prison. And so I said, I want chocolate chip cookies, not the store-bought crispy ones. I want the ones that bend and gooey, right? This is what I want when, if they lock me up for selling Bibles, because I won't stop, you know. Either will you. We'll have a great time. There will be so many of us in prison that, that, that we'll, they'll have to bring in pianos and organs and a sound system and everything. Just, you know, and a dance floor, of course. They'll have to convert the gym into the dance floor. We know all this stuff. We got this all planned out. Okay, but the other thing we've been focusing on in these last days, besides rejoicing, is that we are to, to be in the presence of God worshiping. And, and uh, the two things, though, that he has been teaching us here is, is to rejoice and then to be focused on Messiah as obedient children, as it says, prepare your minds, be self-controlled, set your heart, hope on God. And, and I, I love 1 Peter 1 here. Uh, this is written to primarily Messianic Jews in the first century by a Jewish fisherman. And so he has become anointed. Amen. And so we start in chapter 2. It says, uh, therefore, and this was the word that was preached to us, uh, therefore, rid yourselves of all the malice and deceit, hypocrisy and en envy and slander of every kind. And like uh, newborn babies crave uh, pure spiritual milk of the word so that it you may grow up in your salvation now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. So here we go into uh, the chapter 2 here. And, and as new believers, first he tells them what to reject. And then he tells them what to, what to seek. And, and as obedient children, as he had talked about in chapter 1, born again, obedient, obeying the truth, 
uh, all from uh, chapter 1 there. Reject these things. Now, you read that list, and you can do different translations, but they're all bad things. Reject all bad things. Is, can you just write that in there? Uh, yes. Bad, reject, okay? Uh, just push that uh, eject button and get it out of here. Okay, and, but most of them, if you notice, have to do with the last thing that he was talking about, and that is love one another deeply from the heart. So most of these things would be in the context of your interaction with the rest of the body and other people. And so that was the, like the other focus that we have is, is to love one another from the heart. So, so I feel that we're a little weak in the rejoicing like crazy people all the time. Uh, like David, that's why I played that song today, an undignified song like David danced, he was undignified, I'll be even more undignified than this is what he said to the religious spirit of his day, and, and, uh, and then he uh, is, is the uh, father, as it were, of Messiah. But uh, love one another deeply from the heart, this is another area where I think in modern society that we're very weak, rejoicing and the love thing. And, and uh, because we, we have grown into a humanistic, spoiled brat world, if I can say it that way. And spoiled brats only want to one, and they don't care about anybody else. And this is not what we want to be like, right? And, but this is the way of the world today, especially in America. Everything is geared towards the satisfaction of the flesh. And, and the fleshly things, right? So, so love one another deeply, get happy even uh, in bad times, and rejoice, be praising the Lord, uh, be greatly rejoicing, as he says. And so here now he says to reject these things, and desire, so he says reject these things, and then seek. He tells you what to seek, and you are to seek the, the spiritual, pure spiritual milk of the word, okay? And then by that, you will grow up. And see, I used to work in a drunken doper 12-step uh, program, you know, and, and, I, and there was young people and older people in there, and, and, uh, but I told them, this is a matter of growing up. And this is how I would counsel people, you, and, and I'm talking to a 60-year-old alcoholic, I said, it's time to grow up. Just grow up. And Peter's saying here, we must grow up. And you grow up by the word of God. So what I meant by seeing, saying grow up to them is grown-ups, the definition of a grown-up is he does things he doesn't want to do. He goes to work. Don't want to go to work. You know that's why they pay you? Because you don't want to do it? <laughs> Did you know that? That's a revelation for some of you. It's not entitlement. No, you have to earn it. There is no free. They, they come by the house. They, they want us to get free solar. It's free. And my twin brother, you know I'm nice to people. The twin, not so much. <laughs> he shot the first one, and then Janice yelled at him. Uh, but, uh, no. With a squirt gun for all of you on YouTube. <laughs> But he said, he told this guy, selling this solar stuff, he goes, nothing's free. <clears throat> That's my tax money that you're handing out to other people without my permission. And, and so he just goes right into a lecture against this blooming solar salesman. He says, By, and besides that, you're in Weld County. That's oil and gas. We don't bow down to the Arabs and suck, suck off them, see? And, and uh, uh, so, be independent of Islam, please. Thank you. Uh, am I on YouTube? Oh, oh. <laughs> I love Muslims. I just don't like Islam too much. Okay. Um, they're mean to the girls. That's why. That's all. Uh, no. Um, I don't know about this social media thing. Am I going to survive this? <laughs> You have to start doing things that you don't want to do because it is the responsible thing to do. You got to be responsible to yourself. You have to be responsible to your family. You have to be responsible to your country. You have to be responsible to your savior. Amen. Amen. That's right. Responsibility. Yes. That's a forgotten word today. 
Be responsible, have integrity, do what you say you're going to do. And what is responsibility? It's doing what you actually don't want to do. And, and uh, so, so grow up and desire this uh, milk of the word. And then you can grow up in your salvation. This is that salvation that he has been describing. And you don't want to stay a baby believer. You want to grow up in it. And, and so we have this really thick book here to help you grow up in it. Oh, man, you got to love the, the word of God, right? And let me turn that down a little bit here. All right, so um, uh, let's see, let's go. Uh, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. Okay, now this, you can hang out here for a while, right? Now you have tasted. And you tasted and found out something. You found out that the Lord is good. Adonai Tov. Tov Ma'od as I would have written it. Very good. And this is big these days in the church, you know, we have all, all these songs about the Lord is good and, and t-shirts, the God is good all the time, right? You gotta put in all the time part there. And, and this, uh, lots of songs and, and things like that today, and, and, but it's to taste. And, and that comes from Psalm 34, eight and nine, which is a great uh, psalm to hang out in. Uh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. So here you have, have the uh, blessing and the fear of the Lord with the blessings of salvation that, that is added there in Psalm Shon uh, Roshim Arba. But uh, uh, to, to taste, and, and I've got to think, and now, uh, um, Shimon, you saying that you take a bite out of God? You take a bite like he's an apple? You know, how do you taste? How do you taste God? And then, you know, because you it's not about tasting him with your mouth, okay? How, how do you taste? And this there's one word here, and, and this is kind of the, uh, what I love the most about uh, our halakha to taste is to experience the person you have to experience the person it is not reading about a distant religion that is is with no experience coming to Yeshua leads to an experience experiencing the Lord and how what is the mode the vehicle for experiential life with Messiah. Experiential life with the Messiah is altogether a matter of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. The Holy Spirit abiding in you and our spirit and His spirit are, are, are mixed. The Spirit of the Lord indwells our spirit and the two become one. And this, this Holy Spirit realm that so many people want to kind of shut out because it's, sometimes it's uncomfortable. Uh, the Holy Spirit realm is the, the way that you taste God, the way that you experience God. And so it, if you want to taste how good God is, one would experience Him. And then you say, boy, that tastes good. Oh, that tastes good. And those of you that have had numerous experiences with God and and all can can testify that it's the best, most fulfilling uh, experience of life is is experiencing that eternal life in the person of God. So this is how you do it. Turn your heart, turn your soul, turn your spirit, turn your mind, turn your will, turn your emotion to Him, and and by turning to Him. You can say, I open, the who I am, this person, my heart, my soul, my spirit, nefesh, love, ruach, uh, all this, the who I really am, not my physical flesh, but the who I really am, my person, I turn to you and I open that. I open the who I am to the who you are, and they come together. 
And now you're tasting God. Now you're experiencing God. Now you're, you're growing in God. And this is the most wonderful part of what we are. It is the experience of God. Remember, Moshe is walking on the backside of the desert. And he sees this marvelous sight. This bush that's on fire and it's not being consumed. And it, it's, it's just, well, that's cool. It must have been lightning or something. And then he continues on. No, what does the Bible say? It says, then he turned towards the bush, the burning bush. And then God said, Moshe! He turned, Moshe! You turn, God speaks your name. God touches you. Personally, individually, you have this experience. And what, what, a, what a great experience it is. The, the who I am open to who you are. So it's like a position. And, and you know, he's the door. He's the way. And, and so, but you position yourself. You walk through the door. You go over the bridge. You go through the portal. It's, it's always a turning to him that produces the experience, the tasting of God. And, and so, so get there, amen? And so I wanted to play that song. Uh, there's a portal opening to heaven, and heaven's coming down. We, that's a rowdy song. I old Luke, the guy's crazy. Uh, but, but I love the idea that there's, in this unseen realm, there's doors. And you can go through the door all the time. Uh, it's an unseen door to the world, but with your spiritual eyes, you can, you can go through there and taste. And it's not like... Turning is like begging, although that would not be wrong. But that's not really what it is. It's according to what he's going to stay here, say here is it's to stop rejecting. Stop rejecting and turn towards. And this is the teshuva word in the Ivrit, you know, it is the repentance word. But it just means to turn, change your position, change, change your attitude, to go ahead and open, to taste, to experience. And when you experience Hashem, when you experience Yeshua, what you're going to get slammed with every time is the love of God. And you're just never going to get away from it. Now, if emotion bothers you, you know, well, just take small steps through the portal. Just take small steps towards the burning, but take small steps. But if, if you love the love, then just go running right through that door and get in it. It's never going to be without love. Even if God comes to you with a little bit of a, <clears throat> Martin, we need to talk. Even in that context, you will feel the love of a father that cares about you. So you're going to always, always, in this tasting of God, get slammed by the love. And the love feels good. It's irritating when us guys are in front of people and our faces leak. But it's still better than being stone cold dead. Oh, man. And uh, we, uh, we pray for, for all of our religious friends that do not experience God, that they would experience God more and more. Um, this is why we uh, say uh, here that my highest priority for Kela Hagiga is that it would be known as a presence church. That the presence of God is welcome here and that uh, the conduct of the congregation is to present a habitation of God to experience. And, and this is why we have our, our quiet worship time at the beginning and after this message and, and all, is to try to make the Holy Spirit, the dove, uh, flying around, that it would come and land right here on the dance floor. And, and because why? Because there is 
a place, a habitation where I'm welcome, where I'm, I'm nurtured, I'm, I'm accepted and, and never kicked out. Okay, so you have become, let me tell you, you have become tasters. <coughs> oh man, uh, uh, and his uh, flavor is good, very good. The experience of Yeshua is the highest experience of life on this side. It will be beyond description on the other side. And so get ready for that. But I come up with this stupid thing that I wrote this week when I was doing this. It's www.heaven. And it is worship, word, and wonder. The wonder of it. If you... Uh, Oh, Rabbi, Ravi Zacharias wrote a book, Restoring the Awe of God, uh, Restoring the Wonder of It. And, and so you, uh, you have worship and, and the Word, and then there is this, just the wonder of the who He is, and all the, it's the glory, the kavod, and, the, and all those, the nora, uh, uh, Hebrew words, for the Pella word uh, over the top, uh, you can't describe it, don't even ask, uh, I am Pella, he said, uh, which you can't comprehend how glorious I am, so, so uh, but that, there is this wonder of it all, and this is something that has been taken away from us in this spoiled uh, modern society. It, there, we, we watch movies now with uh, the effects in the movies are so fabulous that it has started to replace the wonder of God. The wonder, we talk about quantum physics and, uh, and uh, running electrons into each other at the speed of light to open other dimensions. And we have all this information. Where is the awe of God, you see? And where, where you just come in to the sanctuary and, and uh, There's a wonder. There's an awe. You cannot stand in front of the presence of God and not have wonder, not have the awe of God. And we have not been having that like we should. I'm telling you, it would be, it would go a long ways in these last days to have some of that. And I mean, you know, I tell a story where you, where you just. <laughs> saw the seraphim and it said their wings were covering their faces and holy, 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 oh, oh, oh gosh, oh, oh. oh. And, and they do that forever and ever and they don't get used to it, you see. Um, that is the wonder of who we're talking about here. And where is that today, you see? See, we need the wonder of, of the person that person with those holes in his hands. <sighs> oh, that, that would be nice to have a church life where nothing ever gets done too much except <laughs> oh, the wonder of God just slamming everybody. People walking by outside go down. <laughs> Finally, that dove has found a place where it's respected. Yeah. You gotta respect the presence of God and desire, <laughs> not exclude. 
damn taste and see. <laughs> yeah, sure, Shimon. <laughs> yeah, try that in front of people. <laughs> Rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Yeshua HaMashiach. And then he quotes Isaiah again. See, I lay in Zion a stone. <laughs> All right. It, it, isn't that good? Um, oh, gosh. As you come to him, think about that. He's not saying if you come to him, or maybe if you get around to it and you come to him, or after this and that is over and, and you're not so tired that as you come to him then. No, see, he just says, as you come to him. You've been born again in this imperishable supernatural seed, so therefore you come to him. That's the way I read it. You come to him. <laughs> and that's our life. Every day, every hour, that coming, oh man, having the presence life. As his children, we can come to him at all times and in all situations, and he will accept us. But Shimon now is going to give us some theology. And uh, we're, by next week, we will be coming into some hermeneutical challenges that are very important to us as a, uh, um, a Zionist congregation. And because there's going to be some theology presented here that uh, can be used in, in a terrible way. And we won't get to it today, except that what I just read here, you can tell, is temple language. And uh, uh, living stones built into a holy habitation, that would be a, a temple. And, and then the priesthood, which is to the Jewish people, a holy priesthood, which is different from the apostate priesthood of the day. And, and then it, it talks about uh, offering sacrifices. So this, this speaking to Jews is, is uh, uh, Jewish language, temple language. But here he says that as you come to him, the living stone. And uh, how many were here when we talked about the stone uh, in the Bible, the, all the titles of, of Messiah as stones? And, and uh, he is now the living stone. And, and uh, so Messiah is a stone in the Bible. And, and how many places this shows up? Many kinds of stones. Uh, there's seven or eight stones will be listed in this chapter by Peter, by Shimon. And in one of my books, there's a chapter called uh, The Messiah Stone. And, and uh, when we studied that, we, we looked into this. Uh, but it's full of theology here. And how, do you remember what stone is in Hebrew? Um, it's made of two words, and it's evan, and, and av and ben is the two words it's made of. And so it is uh, av, ben, ven, it's a, it's a vet instead of a bet there, and aven is stone. And stone is made up of the word of and ben, father and son. And so right away in Genesis, we saw this, that the father and the son are one stone. And they're not two separate people. They're just one revelation. And it's Evan, though. Uh, and and uh, we saw how all these stone titles for Yeshua proved his divinity. So the Mashiach is... God. Okay. And the list of stone titles went like this, starting in Genesis. The shepherd stone of Israel, the Zion stone, 
the foundation stone, the tested stone, the precious stone, the cornerstone, the stumbling stone, the trap, tri tripping stone, the trapping stone, the breaking stone, the rejected stone, the chief headstone, that stone not cut by human hands, the smashing stone, the branch stone. the spiritual stone, and the living stone here. The stone that is alive in Peter here. The stone is God, and this stone is Messiah, and Yeshua uh, is the stone. And, and I added, when I did this series, I added a stone that's not in the Bible. And I just, I just wanted to do it. I, I added, he is the accepted stone. He is the rejected stone here, but he must also be the accepted stone because you have not rejected him. And, and Israel partially has for a partial time, but then he will be accepted by Israel as well. Okay, so, so uh, um, and then what Shimon will say here is this makes us stones as well. Living stones being built into spiritual houses, and then it says, though, that it was rejected by man, but chosen by God and precious to him. Then he will quote, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone. The one who trusts in him will never be put to shame or make haste. We'll talk about that next week, the different translations for that and what it means. But chosen and precious to God. And so we will say amen to that. And with this temple language, holy priesthood, spiritual sacrifices, and the quote from Yeshayahu here, Hashem speaking, Behold, I lay a stone in Zion. And, and you know that whenever you see the word Zion referring to Yerushalayim, that it's always a messianic implication. Uh, Zion is the messianic side of Jerusalem. So we'll stop there. We have a, um, a little bit of worship time here. And, and uh, thank God for our freedom. Amen. Thank God that our founding fathers did what they did because of the Bible. And the Bible caused America to be born. And so the Bible continues to win from the priesthood of America. It's great news. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. Amen. Yavarekaka Adonai Vayishmareka. Yeir Adonai Panava Leka Vechun Echa. Isa Adonai Panava Leka Vayose Imlaka Shalom Bashem. Yeshua Hamashiach Sar Hashalom. Amen and Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you and lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Prince of Peace, Jesus the Messiah, Amen and Amen. Lift his face, his presence upon you. And when that happens, you will see the awe and the wonder of the person who died for you. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom.